Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Today, we are strapping in for uh, what really feels like a generational leap in AI. It really does. We are talking about Gemini 3 Pro or G3 Pro, and the evidence we've seen shows this is not just an incremental update. This is, I think, the moment Google fundamentally shifted the competitive balance. It's a tactical masterstroke. I mean, okay. the timing, the technical specs, and you know, the aggressive economic strategy, it all just came together perfectly. Right. We've been pouring over these analysis reports, and you can see G3 is playing a totally different game. It's yeah. all about deep reliability and and high-value applications. And that's our mission today, to give you the shortcut to understanding that shift. We're going to unpack three core areas. Okay. First, we need to get past the marketing buzz and really understand what PhD-level AI reasoning actually looks like, you know, in practice. Absolutely. Second, we'll look at Google's, frankly, aggressive pivot to autonomous agentic systems. And then finally, we have to analyze the pricing, the premium strategy that pushed Alphabet stock past that magic $300 mark. And that financial reaction is the key context. You're right. The market validated the tech lead almost instantly. So to set the stage for you, G3 Pro lands just days after GPT 5.1, a direct counterpunch. And according to the benchmarks, it immediately took the crown. So let's start with the architecture, the uh, the brains behind it all. Okay, so when we look under the hood, G3 Pro is running on an advanced system called uh, a sparse mixture of experts, or MOE. MOE, yeah. And this is really key to understanding its efficiency. So instead of firing up the entire massive network for every single question, which is just incredibly costly. Super expensive. Right. The MOE system is smarter. It selectively activates only the little subnetworks, the experts, that it needs to solve that specific problem. So it's not just a big brain. It's a brain that knows how to, I guess, focus its resources. But how big is its memory while it's doing all this? The memory is still just vast. It sets the standard. Yeah. G3 Pro keeps that massive 1 million token input context window. Which is what? About 750,000 words? No. Roughly, yeah. And that kind of capacity is just... You can't do without it for deep analysis, for digesting entire scientific journals or huge code bases all at once. Okay, now for the proof. The benchmark scores, these are the numbers that really made the whole industry sit up and pay attention. Is it really? Are? G3 Pro hit a breakthrough 1501 ELO score on El Marina. For anyone listening who's not familiar, ELO scores really reflect how well a model follows instructions in these head-to-head, real-world matchups. And crossing that 1500 threshold is a huge statement. It really is. It just sets a new standard. It tells you G3 Pro is exceptionally reliable at following complex, multi-layered instructions without getting confused or, you know, hallucinating halfway through. But the real validation for that PhD-level claim, that came from the abstract reasoning tests. It did. And we should really focus on the one that stood out the most. Humanity's last exam. HLE. Hey, HLE, right. So HLE is designed to test raw abstract reasoning. It's the ability to apply knowledge to totally new situations, not just spit back facts it's seen before. And the score. G3 Pro scored 37.5% without using any external tools. Mm. And here's the critical part. Yeah. That was almost an 11% improvement over its closest rival, GPT-5 Pro. An 11% gap. Oh. In frontier AI, that isn't a small difference. That is a chasm. It's a chasm. It suggests a fundamental improvement in the cognitive architecture. And what about on really specialized technical knowledge? So on GPQA Diamond, which is all about advanced scientific understanding, you know, the kind of knowledge a top researcher needs, G3 Pro hit 91.9%. Again, significantly ahead. So these scores together, they really confirm it's not just repeating training data. It's actually showing superior synthesis and... Uh, and analytical depth. Precisely. But to really max out that performance, Google introduced the enhanced ultra subscription feature, deep think mode. Okay, what is happening under the hood when a user flips that switch? Deep think is, well, it's essentially iterative refinement on steroids. It pushes performance <laughs> even further by basically just giving the model more resources to, to, to think, to it contemplate. Like thinking time. Yes. And with it, it hit 41.0% on HLE and a really surprising 45.1% on ARC AGI2. That last one is all about solving totally unfamiliar problems, the kind that require long, multi-step problem solving. Okay, so if this MOE architecture is built for efficiency, here's the question that kept jumping out at me from the sources. Go on. Despite all this optimization, the analysis notes that running G3 Pro still costs about 12% more than its predecessor, Gemini 2.5 Pro. Isn't that a contradiction? If it's so efficient, why is it more expensive? That is the critical strategic choice. And you've hit on the perfect point. Google is making a deliberate trade-off 
they could use those MOE efficiency gains to lower the price, you know, compete on volume. Start a price war. Exactly. Instead, they are deliberately reinvesting those gains into what they're calling thinking tokens. So they're using the architectural efficiency not to cut costs, but to buy more compute time for the model to work on its answer. That's it. They are maximizing output quality and reliability. The cost goes up because they're essentially telling you, we are selling assurance, not just cheap tokens. That makes sense. For a hospital relying on this for diagnostics, the cost of a mistake is astronomical. That 12% price hike buys them reliability. It justifies the premium. And reliability is the currency in the enterprise world. But it isn't just about thinking deep. It's about seeing the whole picture, which brings us perfectly to its multimodal mastery. This is where G3 Pro really becomes an enterprise workhorse. It natively supports uh, comprehensive inputs, text, image, video, audio, PDFs. And crucially, it doesn't just process them one by one. It sees the connections between them. It reasons across all of them at the same time. It understands the link between, say, visual data in a chart and the text that describes it. And the benchmarks back this up. 81.0% on MMMU Pro, 87.6% on Video MMMU. Those are industry-leading scores. And that capability is what unlocks the most lucrative, highly regulated sectors. Think about healthcare. Okay. G3 can analyze an x-ray, merge that with the patient's text-based medical history from a PDF, cross-reference it with audio notes from a doctor, and then give you an integrated diagnostic summary. All in one go. Or in finance, I imagine, merging spreadsheet data with video logs and emails for compliance. That comprehensive integration, that's the business case for migrating all your proprietary data to Google Cloud. That's the platform lock-in. It creates enormous switching costs. Once you've moved your most sensitive, complex workflows, the ones that need that deep reasoning and multimodal analysis, you're not going anywhere. You're locked in. It changes the conversation from a general purpose tool to something that is mission critical. And that mission critical nature brings us to the biggest strategic pivot of all. The move from just reasoning to actual task delegation, the agentic paradigm. This is the core thesis of G3's design. Google calls it their most powerful agentic model. So the focus isn't just on generating text, it's about advanced tool use, execution, and managing multi-step tasks all by itself. Delegating entire workflows. That's the idea, and you can see this in the autonomous coding scores. 76.2% on HWE Bench Verified, and 54.2% on Terminal Bench 2.0. Which shows it can navigate complex digital environments, debug code, and basically act like an autonomous software engineer. And to support this, they launched a whole new platform alongside it, Google Anti-Gravity. It's specifically designed to help developers deploy and manage these complex agentic workflows. They didn't just build the engine, they built the highway for it. A dedicated highway for running fleets of these yeah. engines, yeah. But the real game changer, the thing that I think will profoundly impact the consumer experience is generative UI. This feels genuinely new. It is. It's a totally novel platform agnostic innovation. It fundamentally changes how you interact with the AI. So how does it work? How does it change the experience from just getting a block of text back? It leverages the model's deep understanding of your intent, mm -hmm. the, uh, the subtle meaning behind your prompt, and it instantly builds a custom interactive application for you right there on the screen. Can you give us a concrete example? Sure. Imagine you're a financial analyst. You prompt it. Mm -hmm. Show me margin compression data for the top 10 S&P retail stocks for the last three quarters. Let me simulate a 15% raw material cost increase. Okay, a normal search engine gives you links. A normal LLM gives you, what, a static chart? A wall of text. Exactly. But G3, with generative UI, would instantly create a live, custom-built financial dashboard. It would fetch the data, build the charts, categorize the stocks, and present you with an interactive tool. With a slider or something. Exactly. With a slider, you can move to instantly see the hypothetical impact of that 15% cost increase. It's a tool that just didn't exist a second ago. That is incredible utility. It transforms Google Search from a static portal into a, a dynamic, personalized application platform. This has to be a brilliant defensive move for Google's core business. It's the ultimate defense. It reinforces the value of premium subscriptions like Dynamic View and Search AI Mode by providing something competitors just can't easily match. You're not just paying for better answers, you're paying for on-demand, customized computing. Which brings us right into the economics and this very bold premium pricing strategy. The pricing really confirms their focus on the high-end, reliability-driven market. It's a tiered system, reflecting the you know substantial costs of that deep, sustained reasoning. Let's break those tiers down for the developers and enterprises listening in. 
For standard context, which is up to 200,000 tokens, still massive, you're looking at $2 for input and 12 for output per million tokens. Which is already a premium price. It is. But for the long context, over 200k tokens, the cost escalates significantly. It goes up to $4 input and $18 output. That jump for long context is clearly designed to manage the insane resources it takes to process that full million tokens and run deep think mode. So how does this stack up against rivals? Well, it clearly avoids the volume war. G3 Pro is at that $2 to $12 standard rate. Meanwhile, its main rival, GPT 5.1, is going for cost leadership at $1.25, $10. And Claude? Claude 4.5 Sonnet is also positioning itself as a premium option, but it's even higher than G3 at $3.15. That $0.75 cent difference between G3 and GPT 5.1 is substantial at scale. Why would an enterprise pay more for G3 Pro? Again, it all comes back to buying assurance and reliability. For high-stakes tasks, compliance checks, medical diagnostics, mission-critical code, the cost of a subtle error just massively outweighs that API cost difference. So the premium is for peace of mind? It's justified by the data showing G3's superior accuracy and instruction following. But there is a predictable trade-off for all that deep thinking. Speed. Speed. G3 Pro is optimized for high throughput and asynchronous, deep work. It is noticeably slower for rapid-fire chat. You're trading that instantaneous response you might get from GPT 5.1's instant mode for a deeper, more reliable analysis. Okay, let's look at the ultimate barometer of success, the market reaction. The sources confirm this whole strategy resulted in an immediate, tangible financial return. It was an incredible catalyst. Alphabet stock, GOGL, it surged over 6% right after the announcement. It hit a new all-time high of $302.87. And that pushed its market cap to, what, almost $2.94 trillion? Just about. Crossing that $300 threshold was hugely significant. Investors saw it as proof that Google hadn't just regained the technical lead, but more importantly, had a viable high-margin way to monetize it. Right. The focus is on those high-margin revenue streams, enterprise cloud services through Vertex AI, and those consumer subscriptions powered by generative UI. Exactly. And that's critical to offset the huge compute costs and, you know, to shield them from the price wars happening at the lower end of the market. So what was the real world sentiment from developers who actually got their hands on it? Overwhelmingly positive. The phrase that kept coming up was dramatically more capable. They lauded its superior adherence to really complex instructions. We saw that specific test you mentioned, the one about the frozen items. Tell us about that. It's a great simple example of reason meeting um, instruction adherence. Yeah. A user gave it a prompt for a meal suggestion based on a picture of some specific frozen items. G3 strictly used only the items that were visible in that photo. GPT 5.1, on the other hand, started making assumptions, adding common pantry items that weren't in the picture. That kind of strict adherence is what builds enterprise trust. And that trust translates into validation from huge players, GitHub, Thomson Reuters. They publicly verified that G3 had 35% higher accuracy in solving complex software engineering problems. And ultimately, Google's most powerful advantage is just distribution. Right. Tech superiority doesn't mean much if no one can use it. Mm. But G3 Pro is immediately embedded everywhere in search, in the Gemini app with its 650 million users, in Vertex AI and Andy Gravity, that ensures it's the most accessible high-end model where people and businesses already work. So wrapping this all up, we've seen G3 Pro redefine the performance ceiling, pushing the whole frontier beyond simple Q&A towards, well, genuine agentic supremacy and reliable collaboration. It has. And that technical lead has directly translated into a premium commercial product and a huge bump in market appreciation for Alphabet. It's a remarkable calculated success story, mm -hmm. but it's very, success introduces a really unique structural risk for the company. The more successful services like generative UI become, the more they start to compete with the traditional user behavior that drove Google's ad revenue. So the challenge isn't just building better AI. And Not at all. They've proven they can do that. The challenge is successfully pivoting their core multi-trillion dollar business model to one that relies more and more on high margin subscriptions and enterprise contracts. So the question we leave you with is this. Will the proven utility of G3 be enough to justify that necessary shift away from the ad revenue powerhouse that built the company?